So I'm going to start by showing you some images of my work and some feedback that I've had over the years. Can you leave out the menstrual blood? Now this is a painting that I made called Menstruate with Pride, and as you can see, people are crowded around looking shocked and appalled by the menstrual blood. If there was no menstrual blood, they would just be looking shocked and appalled for no reason. Thanks for the feedback, Mum. That's just unnatural. As you can see here, they're referring to my completely natural armpit hair, which took me three months to grow. Fun fact. If you think it's OK to be a Muslim, live a westernised life, and rely on being a good person, you are wrong. You will burn in hell. Now, this person was referring to a number of images that I've made. For example, this one, which is called White Girl, and this one, Self-Portrait with Melons. I will look for you, I will find you, and I will kill you. Some of the more observant here today may have noticed that was actually a quote from the film Taken, but I did get similar comments on my work, and I will come back to that in a minute. So, this work didn't just come out of nowhere. It came through from a breakthrough moment that I had when I was at art school. I made a work where I thought, yes, this is the kind of artist that I want to be. So when you're at art school, you have to do these terrifying crit sessions where, as a group, you go around and you show your work and you give feedback and everything to your classmates. And on this particular occasion, I noticed there was a pattern emerging. I noticed every time the men got up to speak, it seemed like we automatically kind of respected them and we really listened to them. And when the women got up to speak, we were so much harder on them and so more dismissive of them. And I was complicit in that and we were all complicit in that. And so when I was driving home later, I was thinking about this, and I was thinking how we kind of had this sort of unconscious positive bias towards the men. And it was the first time in my life I really realised that I might be held back because of my gender. And it wasn't that I was a feminist. I didn't even know what feminism was. It was just a feeling that I had that something wasn't quite right. So I was driving home, I was getting really annoyed and thinking, Ur, I wish I was a man. If I was a man, people would take the things I have to say so much more seriously. And then this work kind of came into my head. It says, I wish I had a penis, because then I'd fuck you, then steal your job. <laughs> and this highly amused me. So <laughs> the next crit session that we had, I plucked up the courage to show my tutor and classmates this image. Up until this point, I had literally just been doing pictures of me wearing berries. So they were not expecting this. So when I showed them, they were like, oh, you can't say this, you can't talk about this, we don't need feminism, what do you mean? And I realised they were talking like this because I had touched on something they did not want to think about, something they'd happily parked in the back of their minds. I had unwittingly exposed that thing. That was my breakthrough. And up until this point, I have to say, I'd always felt pretty powerless. I had a lot to say about a lot of issues, but I didn't know how to express it or how to make sense of it. When I made this work, it gave me the power. Art gave me a voice. And as we all know, there are so many unequal things in society, and it's almost like we've kind of gotten used to some of those things, and that's not our fault. And I realised I could use art to call out those things, and maybe I could be part of a movement to change things. I could use art to say the unsayable. So, what happens when you do that? This is a picture that I made in 2008. It's called Haram, and I'd like you to raise your hands if you find this image offensive. Okay. So, I'll be honest, I was unsure whether to show this image because I know it's a difficult one, and I know that if I'd seen it, I think I'd probably be offended by it. So, let me tell you a little bit more about this. My mother is a Muslim. She was born in Kenya and she married my non-Muslim British father. She raised me and my siblings as Muslims in Eastbourne and sent us to a Catholic school. So a lot of my work is about that duality of my upbringing and the conflict of identity amongst young British Muslims. For those of you who don't know, eating pork is prohibited in the Quran. And as a result of that, for many Muslims, pigs are an offensive thing. 
And I would say most Muslims who break the odd rule here and there would still not break that rule because it's such a taboo. And for me, growing up, pigs almost kind of became a symbol of the other, of someone who was different to me. But when I got older, I realised that other is me, as I'm a mixed-race British Muslim living in the Western world. And how does that parallel other British Muslims who may be feeling conflict of identity? And on a personal level, I have to say, the work was a deeply personal work for me, looking at my upbringing and, and all the things that I'd experienced. And it means a lot to me, so it's quite hard to summarise it in this talk, but I will summarise. It's... The idea was to bring these two things together to ask the question, how can we embrace these two cultures? So, I exhibited this work in 2008 in London. During the show, I get a phone call telling me I need to come to the gallery right away because someone had thrown a brick through the gallery window. The press got hold of this story and it went crazy. The reason behind me making it had just gotten completely lost and it was all over the news. I tried to keep it from my friends and family, but it just wasn't possible. It got more serious when I started receiving death threats towards me and my family. When the police came, one of them said to me, you knew this would happen. You should never have done it. Now, thank you for the feedback, officer. Greatly appreciated. I knew I was doing something provocative, but I was taking a risk. I thought the risk was worth taking to say the thing I felt needed to be said. Now, disclaimer, I am not comparing myself to any of these people, but imagine if he was right. Imagine if we applied that school of thought to revolutionaries throughout history if they avoided doing something that may offend people. What he was saying, in fact, was be quiet, which is something a lot more serious. So, I have a confession to make. I recently signed a petition to stop somebody from speaking in the UK. I think it was like an anti-feminist speaker or something. After I signed it, I thought, what have I done? Because that completely contradicts everything that I stand for as an artist. Because even if I disagree with that person, they have the right to speak. This is what got me thinking about the silencing of artists and activists in my work. As we hear now, more and more people on social media, for example here, are being trolled consistently online as well. This is a way to silence their voices. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> this is a way to silence their voices. A lot of these activists actually said that they have stopped their work altogether and they've begun to self-censor. I can relate to this. I'd always maintain that I was strong and I would never give in to any abuse and I would always make controversial work. I made my Haram painting in 2008. I realised I had not touched on Islam again in my work since that. I'd always said I was strong and I, I, would, I, would, never, I would never give in to abuse and that I didn't need to talk about that subject anymore. But how could I not need to talk about that anymore? Islam is at the very core of my identity. It's incredulous when I think that I didn't need to discuss that anymore. The truth was, they had one. I've been self-censoring, and I just hadn't realised it. But don't feel too sorry for me, because I was still annoying people, but just about something else. And I have to say, this is the piece that annoys people the most, and I'm not sorry about that one bit. People always say to me, I know you don't mean to offend anyone or provoke anyone, but the thing is, I do. I don't think you should provoke anyone just for the sake of it. There's no point in that. But I think provocation can be used in a clever way, and it can be used to make us think. And that is the point of art. That is why I do what I do. I recently saw a discussion where someone said, you can have freedom of speech, but there are limits. But I think that conversation is a complete non-starter. Because in order for freedom of speech to be a thing, there can be no limits. If there are limits, there is no freedom of speech. And with no freedom of speech, we cannot progress as a society. I always think we're so lucky in this country. We, technically, we can say what we want and, and we can be who we want to be. But that's certainly not the way it is all over the world. We have a great gift and we need to use it. 
I don't have the answers, I'm afraid. I simply make the work and leave it up there for you to discuss. I think we need to be challenged. We need to hear challenging, radical, provocative things, even if we don't agree with them, because it's those things that make us react and make us want to bring about change. We have the freedom to express ourselves, but also to hear the thing we don't want to hear. And that is equally important, the freedom to be challenged. Let's embrace that. Let's not squander our freedom. Thank you.